In this home energy solutions segment, we're going to be talking about this product right here. You may have not seen this before, but this you can actually build a house out of. You can actually build a building out of this stuff. The good news is it's easy to work with. And today to help me out, I've got James Johnson with Integrated Wall Systems. How are you doing? Good. How's it going today, Greg? Very good. Well, let me see. Can you build with this? Absolutely. It's pretty light. Yeah, it's, it's really light. Well, tip, what we're going to do today, folks, we're actually going to take a few minutes and we're actually going to build something right here. We're in the parking lot at the radio station, all right? It's a little breezy today, which is okay. We're going to show that you can actually build this stuff in a slight breeze and you're just going to do it yourself, sure. right? This is good stuff. Well, tell us a little bit about what I'm holding here. Well, what you have here is basically a stay in place concrete forming system. So if you can imagine building a concrete wall with plywood or steel forms, this is the same thing, except we don't take it away. And this incorporates five steps of the building process. This is your insulation, your vapor barrier, your sound barrier, your furring strips, or what we call studs, and then your structural wall, which is the concrete and the rebar. And what's the R value here? As this sits empty, these are R11 per side, so it's an R22. It's going to perform somewhere uh, above R30 as you get the wall put together. With it, a four inch. With a four inch concrete, and then each piece you add, whether it's sheetrock or or uh, a stucco system or a hardy plank or stone or brick, whatever, all of those add to the thermal resistance that make this thing perform at a higher R value than, than it is as it sits empty. And just to be clear, when this is down, okay, and this is being built. Concrete actually gets poured in this section, okay? So you have an R11, you have an R11, okay? Here's your ties that hold everything together, right? Right. And the, good, and the good thing here is it has a lot of thermal mass. It does. So that R value, even if you get a little overwhelmed here, say it's a really, really hot day or a really, really cold day, then you have the concrete, which is a sink itself, right? right? More mass. And then on the other side, you've got more insulation. Right. So unless you're in the Antarctic, all right, uh, you're not going to overwhelm this in, in your winter temperatures. In the summertime, I can't see, why would you need anything more than this at, for a standard built house? No, you wouldn't. And the cool thing about it is since the concrete is protected on both sides, it doesn't change with the daytime temperature like you would expect a building like this brick facade here. If you get up against it, you'll feel that heat on your face late in the evening. This won't do that because that concrete core, that thermal mass is protected with solid, continuous insulation on the inside and out. And the structural integrity of this is fantastic. If you live in high wind areas, if you live somewhere like in Miami-Dade County, you know, live in Florida, live in South Texas, Absolutely. you know, stuff like this, what's the wind capacity on something like this? Basically, if you follow the prescriptive method for, for ICF construction in residential buildings, uh, it's basically laid out to 150 miles an hour, and beyond that, an engineer can go up to just about anything you want. They can basically be made tornado proof, uh, so very high winds, over 200 miles an hour. The, your weak parts are your roof and your windows, and you can buy windows that will withstand 300 miles an hour, and you can uh, put really good roofs on too. But the walls themselves can be built to withstand over 200 miles an hour with no big issues. Now, you can do a concrete roof along with this, can't you? Absolutely, you sure can. And what's nice about that, if you live in one of those areas that you're worried about tornadoes, okay, this is something that you've got to really look at because the, the big news here is you can actually have, you know, the tornado whistles could be going off and you can have your home design that you don't have to worry about at all. Right, you can stay above ground and in your home and be safe. So that's good stuff. Well, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to let James build something. So go ahead. All right, well, I'm just going to start at one corner. I'm going to just uh, pretend like this is uh, the slab that's all drawn out. So what we would do is we'll start at a corner and we'll work down to that corner. We'll meet in the middle and that's where we'll uh, make our, our join in our wall. There's a couple things we'll want to think about as we do that. So it's windy so I'm going to go ahead and stick some rebar in this as I go so you can kind of see how it works. But what will happen is on your corner we'll have a piece of rebar that snaps in here. And it's going to go on the loaded side and then as we go up we're going to, we're going to alternate those as we go up so we can drop vertical rebar down in through it. So the next thing that will happen is we'll continue to build, and we'll build this wall out, and we'll be dropping rebar in as we go, and they'll tie into that little flat piece you see in the middle. That's basically the same as wire, if we were to wire this rebar in. So now we have rebar that's in there. What we'll do now is we'll put the next corner on top, which is going to have a longer leg, and it's going to give me a running bond. So you want to stagger these a lot like you would be laying uh, a course exactly. of block then. That way we don't have to tie anything together. It's going to tie itself together so the wall won't want to push when you put concrete in it. Now, nice thing about this, if I can show you, look at the way the rebar is tied in here. If you take a closer pan there, it just pops right inside these channels. Right. Okay. We, we so do you, have to tie, you don't have to tie them in after that then, right? No, you don't. You don't have so to no it. wiring. That meets code. Now, what's nice about that, you're not tying wire, right? That's exactly. a great thing. So we'll put the next one on. We'll work our way down. Let's say we decided there was going to be a window, and it's going to be 
or what's going to be right here. So what I would do is simply take this piece off. We'd have laid this out already. I'll grab my handsaw, and this is how easy it is. 